in islam's teachings goodness takes the lead choosing what's right fulfills every need invitation to virtue invitation to virtue alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin amma ba'd فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله My dear viewers of Madin channel Welcome back to another episode of Invitation to Virtue and in this episode, my dear viewers of Madni channel, that we will discuss that invitation to virtue is a pleasurable act of worship. How? Inshallah, we will discuss this. But before we start, my dear viewers of Madni channel, let's listen to some fadilas, virtues of reciting turud upon the Prophet Ali salatu uh, wasalam. It's mentioned that the ranks of the sender of durood are elevated in this world and in the hereafter. Moreover, it says that sending durood upon the Prophet Ali salatu wasalam increases the love for the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in the heart of the sender. Subhanallah. Furthermore, by cleansing the heart is mentioned, the recitation of Durood cleanses one's heart and keeps it away from doing sins and thinking bad. Moreover, a person who is indulged in difficulties should recite Durood as it helps to get rid of difficulties. And lastly, different types of pain in the body can be removed by sending the rood upon the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore my dear viewers of Madni channel and in particularly the elders that are watching, generally they are the ones that suffer pain in the body or in, or in bones etc. So therefore recite the rood upon the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi with this certainty that with the blessing of this durood inshallah Zawajal, the pain will go away. Inshallah you will see the pain actually going away. So therefore, my dear viewers of Madhini channel, make a habit of reciting the Rood upon the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam at every opportunity that we get. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barak wa sallam. My dear viewers of Madhini channel, one should never be careless about conveying the invitation to virtue. Don't be careless. So let's say you are doing it, but let's not be careless. One performing it with sincerity for the divine pleasure of Allah wa Taala will certainly find it a very pleasurable act of worship. Leader of the believers, Sayyiduna Usman Ghani radiAllahu Taala Anhu has stated, "I have found the pleasure of worship in four things. Number one, fulfilling the faraid, mean that those deeds which are declared compulsory by Allah wa Taala. So number one, fulfilling the faraid. Number two. Refraining from acts declared a haram by Allah Taala. Number three, commanding good for attaining the pleasure of Allah Taala. So invitation to virtue, commanding good, invitation to virtue for attaining the pleasure of Allah Taala. And number four, preventing people from evils to remain safe from the wrath of Allah Taala. So this is what Usman Ghani radiAllahu Taala Anhu has said: I have found pleasure of worship in four things. A companion of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam Sayyiduna Abi Bakra Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu One said, I prefer my death to that of any other living being Confused and worried, people asked, but why? He Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu replied, I fear living in such an age when I am unable to convey the invitation to virtue and to prevent from evils there isn't any good in that age. Allahu Akbar. This is how important, my dear viewers of Madni channel, invitation to virtue is. And look how enthusiastic our pious predecessors were. How wonderful their mindset was. They were so deeply interested in conveying the invitation to virtue that they even considered it impossible to live without it. So they didn't want to reach that age that it would be difficult for them not to carry out invitation to virtue, so they didn't want to live into to that age. Whereas on the other hand, my dear of Mani Channel, we found thousands of opportunities. We find thousands of opportunities of performing these virtuous acts. 
they come to us. We find the opportunities, but we make thousands of excuses not to do them. And we do not care about it. On many occasions, it is even wajib for us to prevent others from evils, but regretfully, we do not pay attention. So therefore, my dear views of Money Channel, in order to grow this enthusiasm inside us of, for invitation to virtue, to have determination to remove corrupt beliefs, and to get the deserving of heaven by reforming the wicked people, one way we can do this is by always remaining affiliated with the Madani environment of Dawati Islami. And how a yearning, my dear views of Money Channel, for the protection of your faith, keep offering salah punctually and regularly, Spend your life acting upon the sunnahs and filling in the nake ahmal. And my dear views of Money Channel, I will tell you a Madani parable for inspiration that we get inspired to actually come forth and give invitation to virtue. And this is a summary what I'm about to mention. This is a summary of piece of writing received a, from an Islamic brother from the area of Punjab in Pakistan. This is as follows. He says that before I joined the Madani environment of Dawat Islami, I used to remain in the gathering of the people who hold the corrupt beliefs, who, who hold beliefs contrary to our beliefs. And in consequence of keeping misleading company for almost 13 years, Ma'azallah, he says, I had also fallen into the pit of corrupt beliefs. Because of course, as your company will affect you. Whatever company you're sat with, eventually, that will you know overshadow you will overcome you and then you will become like that moreover he says i was a non-practicing person addicted to what watching movies watching dramas and he was a fond of listening to songs contrary to sunnah he says i had grown a short beard and in the nearby area of my general store he says was a masjid where an Islamic brother who was also a religious student, he says, he used to deliver dars from the book Faizane Sunnat. And he used to hold a class, a Quran Tajweed class, Madrasatul Madina for adults. And he, he says that it was probably Safar al Muzaffar, 1420 Hijri, in approximately June 1999. It's a very old incident. He says, when the preparation city level, Ijtima Sunnah, Ispari Ijtima, of Dawat Islami were enthusiastically in progress. One day he says that the same religious student, accompanied by another Islamic brother, came to my shop and said salam to me. As I hated those associated with Dawat Islami because of wrongly assuming that they were a deviated group, because he was originally with a group which held corrupt beliefs. So of course they would you know, target the beautiful environment of Dawat Islami. So and then he so what he says that I, I hated those associated with Dawud Islami because of wrongly assuming that they were a deviated group. I did not reply to the Salam, but rather pretended to clean my shop, paying them no attention. After a little pause with a smile, smiling face and a very courteous manner, they invited me to attend the forthcoming city level Sunnah inspiring Ijtama. Now for example, now look, if you give Salam to someone Madi Vizu Madi Channel, he doesn't respond. You know he heard you, but he doesn't respond, just carries on cleaning. What would our reaction be? But Alhamdulillah, these brothers of Dawat Islami, they were the smiling face, very courteous manner. He says that they invited me to attend the forthcoming city level Sunnah inspiring Ijtima. But what did he do? He says that refusing the invitation, I even rebuked them rudely and offensively. Being he shouted at them, even though they were disappointed. They did not utter even a single word, which was really impressive trait of this. He says that may millions of salam be upon their tolerance. So he says after I close my shop in the evening and return home, I thought about this because sometimes when you, when you go home, you recap the entire day that this happened, this happened, this happened. So of course this was the highlight of the day for him. He says when he returned home, he says I thought how politely. Those devotees of the Messenger Ali Sallallahu invited me to the ijtima. So he says, anyway, I went to the ijtima just to see what goes on there. And with that intention he goes, he goes, let me see what's happening there. He says, as I reached the ijtima, or as I reached the gathering, my sleeping fortune woke up, blessing me with the privilege of beholding the blessed golden grills of the beloved and the blessed Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the state of wakefulness, not sleep, 
while she was awake. She says, Alhamdulillah, Jalla, during the ijtima, a preacher from Faisalabad, Pakistan, delivered the speech, making individual effort very affectionately after the ijtima, making invitation to virtue, he invited me to travel with a Madani Qafila. I intended and was soon privileged to travel with a three-day Madani Qafila in the company of the devotees of the Rasul Ali Salatu Wasalam. Then he says that our Madani Qafila stayed in a masjid and on the very first night of the Madani Qafila, I was greatly blessed. He says, I had the vision in which I found myself to be sweeping the courtyard of Masjid al Nabawi. Subhanallah. Meanwhile, the golden grills opened and the Rasul of Rahma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came out calling out my name. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, Clean your inner self also. Allahu Akbar. Clean your inner self also. And this dream, he says, caused a Madani revolution in my heart. Whereas I did not previously believe in Hayatul Nabi, i.e. the belief that Noble Prophet Ali Salatu Salam is alive. Ma'azallah. I had the belief that the beloved Ali Salatu Salam was unable to see and listen to us and that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was unaware of our inner conditions. Alhamdulillah, he says, the truth was exposed to me. I not only is the revered and renowned Rasul Ali Salatu Salam aware of our names, but also of our heart feelings, or the feelings of our heart. Alhamdulillah, Azza wa Jalla, he says, he says that I truly repented of corrupt beliefs and began to grow a fist length beard since then. And today I have a beard upon my face, a crown of turban upon my head, and madani clothing on my body, all in accordance to sunnah. All of my family members, he says, have joined the madani environment. And he says, glory to Allah wa ta'ala, in the high, the devotee who came to my shop to invite me to the ijtima. This is a very, very unique point, my dear Madani channel. So the person who came to the person's shop to invite him towards the ijtima, to do an invitation to virtue, has now progressed of becoming a member of the central majlis shura of Dawat Islami. And by the time of writing this parable, I have been affiliated with Madani environment of Dawud for 10 years and privileged to travel with Madani Kaflas continuously for 3 years. During this period, I further privileged to render services as the Negran, as the manager of a certain area. And he traveled in Bangladesh thrice with Madani Kafla and all of these things, my reviews of Madani channel. And subhanAllah, look how it all started. It started by that one visit. By that one visit, my dear views of Mandi channel, and they went, gave salam, he didn't respond to the salam. After a short pause, they invited him towards the gathering of the Islami, then he shouted back at them. But he was happy, but he was smiling. He didn't say anything back, and that's it. He didn't say anything more. Today, if someone shouts at us when we're trying to do good to them, we're like, oh, I was trying to do it for your benefit, and you're shouting at me, all right, go do one. No, no, this is not the way, my dear views of Mandi channel. Have you seen that how subhanAllah great Allah wa ta'ala is? When he, Allah, when he Azza wa Jalla showers his mercy upon any bondman, he Azza wa Jalla makes his fortune smile on the bondman. He Azza wa Jalla purifies his heart from the impurities of corrupt beliefs, making him aware of the glorious status of his beloved and blessed Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and enabling him to praise the Prophet Ali sallallahu wasallam. As it is obvious from the above Madani parable, there were countless such people who denied the glorious state of the greatest Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and they were always hostile to him. Blessing them with the wealth of Islam, Allah Azza wa Jalla enabled them to sacrifice their lives for his beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And how loyal my the blessed companions expressed their feeling, and is mentioned in the book Sahaba i Kiram ka Ishq Rasul that. Some of the sentiments of blessed companions after embracing Islam is mentioned by after he radiallahu ta'ala anhu embraced Islam, Sayyiduna Sumama bin Usal Yamani, a chief of the Yamama tribe, said, But Allah wa ta'ala, this is before, says, No face in the world was more detestable, deserving of hatred in my eyes than that of the Holy Prophet. But today, that very same face is dearer to me than all other faces. 
by Allah Azza wa Jalla, I considered his religion the worst of all. But now I consider the very same religion the best of all. By Allah Azza wa Jalla, no city was more detestable to me than the city of his city. By Allah Azza wa Jalla, now that very same city is dearer to me than all of the other cities. Subhanallah. Another one says that Hind bin Utba, the wife of Abu Sufyan bin Harb, who had chewed the liver of Sayyidina Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu, remarked after she embraced Islam, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no family in the world was more detestable to me than yours, but today your family is dearer to me than all other families in the world. Subhanallah. Another one, Sayyidina Safwan bin Umayyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu stated, on the day of the Battle of Hunayn, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa bestowed wealth upon me, whereas he was the most detestable person in my eyes. Ma'asallah. He sallallahu alayhi wa continued to bestow wealth upon me until he sallallahu alayhi wa became the most beloved person in my eyes. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa This is my day views and my channel, how Sahaba Ikram Ali Muridwan loved the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. My dear viewers of Mani Channel, our pious predecessor Rahimahumullah Ta'ala would convey the call to righteousness apparently as well as spiritually. In Basra, a disciple of Sayyidina Junaid Baghdadi Rahmatullah Ta'ala was a hermit. And a hermit is a person who for religious reasons lives alone and avoids meeting other people. One day, he thought of committing a sin. As a result of the evil thought, his face blackened. After three days, the blackness of his face disappeared. The very same day, a letter from his murshid, spiritual guide, reached with this message. Keep your heart in check. I had to work like a washerman for three days in order to remove the blackness of your face. Allahu Akbar. So my dear views my channel. This is how our pious predecessors would invite towards virtue not just uh, physically but spiritually also and also this parable shows my dear Mani channel about Sayyidina Junaid Baghdadi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali that he was a very high ranking spiritual guide with divinely bestowed great spiritual insight not only did he Rahmatullahi Ta'ala become aware of the hard feelings of his disciple living in Basra and see the blackness of his face but also remove the blackness by praying for his spiritual attention so therefore my dear viewers of Mani channel one should not shy away of becoming a disciple of a spiritual guide and becoming the disciple of a spiritual guide who fulfills the required conditions and remaining loyal to him is of great benefit authored by a unanimously acknowledged researcher of the Islamic sciences Alama Sheikh Abdul Haq Muhaddith Dehilvi Rahimahumullah regarding the biographies of the friends of Allah the masterpiece Akhbar al Akhyar the author stated Seeing a camel grazing on the grass in a jungle, a rat said, O camel, you get loyal to anyone. The camel replied, I am loyal to you. One day the camel was grazing on the green leaves of the tree when the rope of his nose badly in a bush. Making the camel helpless, miserable and anxious, the camel called out to the rat. Why did he say I was loyal to him that's why? Within a short while, the rat along with other rats came and all of them, you know, started chewing upon the, ro the coat rope, freeing the camel. Now, what do we learn from this? One should remain loyal to anyone instead of remaining footloose and a fancy free. Anyone remaining loyal to a perfect spiritual guide is help in the times in this regard. And there was another story I would like to mention as well, that there were some people in a gathering, suddenly what happened is a frog. A frog came there, jumping. Seeing the frog, a wise man fled from the gathering, considering him a coward. Others began to make fun of him. When asked for the reason of fleeing, the wise man replied, I am not afraid of the frog, but I fear that a snake might be chasing it. Similarly, if a saint is not perfect, but his spiritual order is very strong, so one should be cautious about it. If anyone hurts the feelings of that saint, all other saints of his order will get sad. My dear views and money channel. The snake eats the frog, which is why the wise man fled as soon as he saw the frog 
lest any snake was chasing to bite him. In this story, as an example of illustrating the point that through the saint himself, though the saint may, himself may not be perfect, his preceding spiritual guides may well be perfect. Indeed, one has to become the disciple of a perfect spiritual guide. Indeed, one who becomes the disciple of a perfect spiritual guide is strongly supported. No matter his immediate spiritual guide is not strong, the spiritual guide of his spiritual guide or the other preceded spiritual guides before him must be strong, which is a means of gaining blessing in this world as well as the hereafter. So therefore, my dear viewers of Madhi channel, one should, you know, wholeheartedly follow in these footsteps of the spiritual guides. Allah Taala has narrated a parable in this regard as well, that a beggar once reached a shop and asked the owner for a rupee. The shopkeeper refused, but the beggar threatened Give me the rupee or I will throw all of your goods out of your shop. People gathered around them to see what the matter was going on. Coincidentally, a high-ranking spiritual saint came there and said to the shopkeeper, Give him the rupee instantly or else your shop will be ruined. I had a look at his inner self to see whether he possesses some spiritual power or not and found that he doesn't, he doesn't possess so. I then saw his spiritual guide who was also like him, I found the spiritual guide of his spiritual guide to be from amongst the friends of Allah Taala. I also saw him standing in wait to ruin your shop as soon as the beggar curses you. Narrating this parable, Allah Taala stated that the beggar was, dev was a devoted disciple of his spiritual guide. And great religious scholar has stated that in the register of Sayyidina Ghosi Azim Taala Ali, are written the names of those who are and will become his disciples till the day of judgment. His Grace Sayyiduna Ghosi Azim Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali stated, Allah Tabarahu Wa Ta'ala has bestowed upon me a register as vast as one's vision and the names of all of those who would become my disciples till the day of judgment were written in it. I was then told, Qad wuhibu lak, all of them are gifted to you. So therefore my dear views of Madhi channel, Coming towards the end of our program, we have seen how greatly our pious predecessors would invite towards virtue. And we should learn from this and take this on board as well that our pious predecessors will look for any short, any excuse to invite towards virtue. Any little thing and they will invite towards virtue. They will come forth and invite towards virtue. So we do dua in the court of Allah wa Ta'ala. Allah wa Ta'ala allows us to take this on board and invite towards virtue. Amin Bijahi Nabijil Amin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallu Ala Al Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam In Islam's teachings Goodness takes the lead Choosing what's right Fulfills every need Invitation to virtue Invitation to virtue